welcome to the course computer design of electrical machine we have a lecture 6 today on transformer design part 3 well the outline of today presentation we like to have performance evaluation of transformers then cooling of transformer and followed by exercise numerical analysis and reflectors so coming to the performance analysis of the transformers the resistance of high voltage and low voltage winding are to be calculated in order to estimate the copper loss in the transformer and based on the losses as the temperature rise and the cooling system is to be designed and the area of cross section of high voltage and low voltage coils the number of turns and layout of the windings are used to calculate the mean mean turn length of the low voltage and high voltage winding and then the resistance of each winding can be calculated as follows so resistance of each winding can be calculated as, as follows the resistance of primary winding per phase rp equal to rho lmt tb upon ap and the resistance of the secondary winding per phase is rs equal to rho lmts ts divided by s where lmt lmtp lmts are the length of mean turn of primary and secondary windings respectively and tp ts are the corresponding number of turns of primary and secondary and ap and as are the area of cross section of the conductors of primary and secondary winding where the resist uh, resistivity rho is the of copper at 60 degree celsius is 2.1 into 10 power minus 8 ohm meter. So, mean turn length of the two winding can be calculated as mean turn length of the primary winding LMTP equal to pi into mean turn diameter of the primary winding and mean turn length of the secondary winding is LMTS, LMTS equal to pi into mean turn diameter of the secondary winding and the total I square losses in winding is PCU equal to IPR square RP plus IS square RS. So, total resistance per phase refer to the primary is R1 equal to Rp plus Ts upon Tp upon Ts square into Rs and per unit resistance Rpu will be Ip Rp upon Bp. So, now performance well is for this for the purpose of those, those are resistance now reactance calculation the reactance of the windings primarily involved uh, estimation of the leakage flux and uh, reactance calculation are required to make an estimate the regulation of the trans voltage regulation of the transformer to be designed. So, we have to just identify useful flux and leakage flux and you can just see from the plot electromagnetic flux line showing the useful and uh, leakage flux um, like the leakage flux which is confined to only typically that winding we call it leakage and which is going to be I mean typically linked with the both the both the limbs or both the windings we call it the useful flux. So, as you can see here in the diagram that okay, some of the flux which are confined to typically only to the particular limb is called leakage flux as it is marked here and the another is the main flux or usual flux which is shown here and similarly from this FEM elements analysis also you can see the two different kind of the fluxes like. So, now coming for this reactance calculation the we say that usual flux the flux that links with both primary and secondary windings and is responsible for transferring the energy electromagnetically from primary to secondary side is called the useful flux and the path of the useful flux is in the magnetic core and leakage flux the flux that links only with the primary or secondary winding and is responsible for imparting inductance to the winding is called the leakage flux and the path of the leakage flux depends on geometrical configuration of the coils and the negligible and neighboring iron masses. Now, for this reactance we say leakage reactance xl equal to xl equal to 2 pi into inductance that l 2 pi f into flux linkage divided by current and flux linkage lambda is flux into the number of turns n and that flux is enough for ampere turn divided by reluctance so it is a or is a ampere mf means 80 into per means and where per means is 1 upon reluctance that is a mu zero mu r upon l where a is, a is the cross section area with the flux is established and is the length of the flux path. So, if x p and x s are the leakage reactance of primary and secondary winding then the total leakage reactance of the transformer referred to the primary is x 1 equal to x s s p plus x s square equal to x s plus x p into t p upon t s square. A similar leakage reactance for the primary refer to the secondary will be x2 equal to x p dash plus x p. So, that is x p t s upon t p square into x s. So, estimation of 
estimation of the leakage flux or reactance is always difficult on account of a complex geometry of the leakage path, flux path and great accuracy is unobtable. So, a number of assumptions are to be made to get the usable approximate expression and validity or the accuracy of the expression is checked against the test data. So, the following are the assumption considered in the leakage reactance calculation of the core type of transport. The effect of magnetizing current is neglected, reluctance and effect of saturation of iron are neglected and all the MF are assumed to be useful to overcome the reluctance of the coil height. So, the leakage flux distribution in the coil and in the space between the high, low voltage and high voltage coils is assumed to be parallel to the lag axis and equal axial length for primary and secondary winding when the flux paths are parallel to the winding along with the axial height. So, we consider that IP equal to IP into T A P equal to IS into T S equal to total M and length of mid turn of the both winding are considered equal. So, now you can say total uh, flux link, linkage of the primary or secondary winding is due to as you can see in the diagram in the leakage flux as you can see. So, leakage flux inside the primary or secondary winding and leakage flux in the low voltage and high voltage coils as you can see the typically the different dimensions like width of the uh, prime secondary winding width of the primary winding and the space in between a the dimensions are given here like. So, for this consider considering the BP and BS are the real depth of the primary and secondary winding TP and TS are the number of turns of primary and secondary winding per phase for if it is a three phase transformer and IPS are the primary secondary current per phase for three phase and LMT or LMTS are the mean turns length of the primary and secondary winding and LMT is the mean turn length of primary and secondary considered together. LO is the circumference of the insulation portion or duct in both between low voltage and high voltage winding and LC is the axial height of or the length of both low voltage and high voltage coil. So, to determine the leakage, uh, the flux linkage due to the flux inside the coil, consider an elemental strip dx at a distance of x from the edge of low voltage winding or from the very close to the core, then the flux linkage of the low voltage winding due to the flux phi x is in the strip is phi x equal to uh, it flux uh, psi x equal to phi x into the number of turns linked by the phi x and this psi x will be the ampere turns producing psi x into permeance of the strip into number of turns linked by the phi x. So, the psi will be equal to I p T p x divided by B p and that is multiplied L m t d x into mu 0 upon L c multiplied T p x into divided by B p. So, now we can say the M f acting across the strip will be x p x upon B p into I p T p or I p T p into x upon B p and permeance of the strip is now mu 0 L m t upon L c into d x and flux in a strip is I p T p x upon B p plus mu 0 L m t divided by L c into d x and the psi x is now typically I p T p x upon B p and into L m t d x in mu 0 L c into T p x in divided by B p and this flux links with the x p x upon B p into T x T p terms. So, now considering the mean turn length of the strip is approximately equivalent to L m T p. So, therefore, the total flux linkage due to the flux inside the coil is given at phi x is 0 to B p in bracket I p B p I p T p x upon B p into L m T p mu 0 d x upon L c into T p x upon B p or this psi x is now taking indication mu 0 L m T p upon L c into I p T p square. 0 to b x upon b p square into d x and after taking this it comes pi x equal to l p t p square mu 0 l m t b p upon 3 l c. If one of the one half of the flux phi 0 in between the low voltage and high voltage windings is assumed to be linked with the each winding then the flux linkage of the primary winding due to the half of the flux of flux phi 0 in between l v and h v winding is phi 0 psi 0 equal to phi 0 by 2 into number of turns linked by phi 0 and psi 0 ampere turns producing phi 0 into permeance of duct into number of turns linked by the flux uh, phi 0. So, psi 0 equal to half T p i p into L 0 a mu 0 upon L c into T p. So, now we can say therefore, total flux linkage of the primary winding is lambda equal to psi plus psi 0 that is i p T p into mu 
mu zero upon L C in bracket L M T P B P by three plus L zero A by two in bracket close. Then the L M T P and L zero to be equal, the total flux linkage of the primary winding becomes with the assumption that L M T P equal to L O. That is means lambda equal to psi plus psi zero or equal to I P T P square into mu zero L M T P divided by L C in bracket B P upon by three plus A by two. Therefore, the linkage reactance of the primary winding per phase will be x p equal to root by f i p t p square to mu zero upon l c in bracket l m t p b p by three plus l zero a by two and this typically equal to two pi f t square to mu zero upon l c into in bracket l m t b p by three plus l zero a by two and linkage reactance of the secondary winding in the similar manner will be x s two pi f t s square into mu zero upon LC in bracket LMTS BS by three plus L zero A by two. Now the total reactance for frequency transformed to primary is therefore given is x one equal to x in plus x dash s dash that is two pi f mu zero T P square LMT by LC in bracket A plus BS plus B P by three. So now the performance relation. Uh, we will be going to no load current of the transformer. So, determination of the no load current enables to calculate the co-losses of the transformer, and the no load current I zero represented as a phase diagram in the figure. The vectorial sum of magnetizing current I m and the co-loss or working component I c as given by. So, I m produces flux I m, and in the magnetic circuit and L c supply the no load losses of the transformer. As you can see the phase diagram, the I c is in phase with the V p as a co-loss component. And I M is perpendicular to the uh, V P or in in phase with the flux I, and vector sum of both is the I zero that is the total no load current. Now, thus the no load input to the transformer P zero equal to V one into I zero cos phi zero that is V one I C, and no load loss as per output is also the input equal to output plus losses. So, since the copper loss under no load condition is almost negligible. The no load losses as the no load current is quite small, around one two percent. No load losses can be entirely taken as the due to coal loss only. So now coal loss component of no load current I C equal to coal loss by V one for single phase transformer and I C equal to coal loss by per phase V one per phase for the three phase transformer and R M S value of magnetizing current I M equal to peak magnetizing peak magnetizing ampere turns by under root two into T one for T one is the number of primary turns. So now the magnetic circuit of the transformer consists of both iron and air path. The iron path is due to the lacks and yokes of, and the air path is due to the unavoidable joint created by the core composed of stampings of different shape. And if all the joints are assumed to be equivalent to an air gap of the length L G, then the total ampere turns for the transformer magnetic circuit will be eight equal to iron, and for eighty four iron plus eight hundred thousand into L G into B M. And the magnetizing current can be calculated that I M equal to ampere turns for iron plus eight thousand into L G B M upon under root two into T one. So now estimation of magnetizing current, the peak value of the magnetizing current in terms of M and number of turns is equal to I M peak equal to eighty zero upon T P. That is the total magnetizing M F under load condition at T P the primary number of turns. So eighty zero equal to M F of core plus M F plus U plus M F for joint. So eighty zero equal to eighty C plus eighty Y plus eighty J. So now coming to this entire M F as eighty zero equal to eighty C plus eighty Y plus eighty J. So now find out each component like M F for core that is eighty C. So M F per meter for maximum flux density in the core into the length of path traced by flux in the core. So we have a equal to a small eighty C into two L C. Considering that. Equal to two ATC into HW, where LC equal to HW. That is the height of the window, or you can call it the height of the limb or the core. And MF required for yoke ATY, a MF for per meter for maximum flux density in the yoke into the length of path in the magnetic yoke equal equal to small ATY into two LY. This equal to two ATY into WW, and because LY equal to WW width of the window, where the AT C and eighty Y and per meter for maximum flux density in the core and yoke respectively and two L C and two L Y the total length of the core and yoke respectively. Now the eighty J will be equal to eight hundred thousand 
एल जी बी एम एज द जॉइंट्स आर एज्यूम टू बी इक्वल एंड टू एन एयर गैप एंड द आर एम एस वैल्यू ऑफ द मैगनाइजिंग करंट फॉर साइनेशल करंट इज गिवन बाई आई एम आर एम एस इक्वल टू एटी जीरो डिवाइडेड बाई अंडर रूट टू पी टू अंडर रूट टू इन टू टी पी एंड मैगनाइजिंग करंट इज नॉन साइनेशल सो इस आर एम एस वैल्यू गिवन आई एम एस इक्वल टू एटी जीरो इन टू के पी इन टू टी पी विद के टी पी इज द पीक फैक्टर नाउ को लॉस इन और आयरन लॉस कंपोनेंट ऑफ द नोट करंट गिवन बाई आई सी और आई आई और स्कॉल स्मॉल आई एल दैट इज पी सी और पी पी आई और पी सी डिवाइड बाई के पी इन टू के पी इन टू टी पी वेर पी आई और पी सी इज आयरन लॉस और कोल लॉस एंड वी पी इज द प्राइमरी वोल्टेज तो मैग्नोलॉजी करंट ड्राइव फ्रॉम सिंगल फेट ट्रांसफॉर्म फोर फुट फॉर थ्री फेट ट्रांसफॉर्म टू बट द लेंथ ऑफ द कोर इज इन दैट केस थ्री एल सी तो द मैग्नोलॉजिंग वोल्ट एम्पियर टर्म्स इज एक्सप्रेस एज द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द वोल्टेज इंड्यूस्ड इन द प्राइमरी ऑफ द transformer winding and the magnetizing current the voltage induced in the primary of the transformer winding is 4.44 fim into tp or equal to 4.44 fim ai tp where fim is bm into ai and magnetizing current equal to im equal to 80 under root 2 tp and hence the magnetizing volt ampere current is 4.44 fbm at ai tp into 80 divided by under root 2 tp and so magnetizing volt ampere will be vm M equal to 4.44 FIM AITP into 80 upon divide by root 2 TP, expressing MF in terms of the uh, M per meter and the length of iron path that is 80 equal to 80 I into 2 LI. We get the VATA equal to 4.44 B F BM AI into 80 I into LI divided by root 2. So now the magnetizing volt ampere turn per kg can be found out by determining the This of magnetizing volt ampere turn to the weight of iron, which is given by W I equal to density into volume, and we note the density of iron is 7.8 into 10 power 3 kg per meter cube, and the volume is given by product of area of iron A I and length L I. Hence, the value in the above equation we can get W I equal to 7.8 into 10 power 3 into A I into L I. So, if the magnetizing volt ampere turn per kg obtained dividing by M and W I that is V M per kg 4.44 F F B M A T I divided by root 2 7.8 per minus 3 or equal to 0.4025 F B M A T I into 10 power 3 or almost equal to 0.4 F B M A T I into 10 power 3 and magnetizing current I M is magnetizing current volt ampere divided by kg into weight of the core uh, number of phases and volt per phase so the no, The no load losses that occur in the core or iron part of the transformer occur at all the times when the primary is energized, irrespective of the whether the second is loaded or not. So the I square loss occurring in the primary due to no load current is negligible. The core loss or iron loss, which is constant, has two components, namely the hysteresis and eddy current loss. Loss due to the magnetization and demagnetization of the core, iron core, when it is subjected to alternating magnetic field, and this loss. It directly proportional to the flux density B M volume B of the core and frequency F of alternating field. So stress loss is B H equal to K H V into B M power 1.6 into F, where K H is a constant whose value depends on the type of the magnetic magnetic material used in the core and yoke. So like stress loss, the eddy current loss also occurs in the core of the transformer, and the alternating magnetic flux produces eddy current in the core, which results in loss of the power. Called eddy current loss. To reduce this eddy current and hence the eddy current loss, the core is laminated into thin steels which are insulated from each other by enamel coating. And this loss is proportional to the volume of the core the square of flux density B M in frequency F and also the square of the thickness of lamination P. Eddy current loss is P equal to K K V B B M square F square T where K is the K is the constant whose value depends on the resistivity of core uh, ferromagnetic material used in the transformer. So these are the losses occurring in the two windings of the transformer or load on load conditions. Since these losses are vary with the load, so they are called load losses. And copper losses are also expressed as P C U I square R. Since this is the I square R loss in the windings, it can be calculated from the resistance and current reading of the winding. So calculation of total core loss will be total core loss will be core loss in leg plus core loss in yoke, and the core loss can be estimated at design stage by referring to a graph of core loss per kg versus flux density. So core loss in leg is loss 
पर के जी इंटू द लैग इन टू द वेट ऑफ द लैग इन पर के जी तो लॉस पर के जी इन लैग इन टू वॉल्यूम ऑफ द लैग ए आई इन टू एच आई एंड डेंसिटी ऑफ द स्टील ऑफ आयरन दैट इज सेवन पॉइंट फाइव बाई और सेवन पॉइंट एट ग्राम पर सेंटीमीटर स्क्वायर और के जी मीटर क्यूब एंड टोटल कोल लॉस कोल लॉस प्लस इन लैग प्लस कोल लॉस इन योग कोल लॉस इन योग इज लॉग पर लॉस पर के जी इंटू योग इंटू वॉल्यूम ऑफ योग ए ए वाई इंटू मीन टन लैन एंड टू डेंसिटी ऑफ द आयरन यूज तो टोटल कोल लॉस इज नंबर ऑफ लैग्स इन टू द लॉस पर के जी इन लैग्स एंड वॉल्यूम ऑफ द लैग्स ए आई इंटू एच डब्ल्यू एंड इन डेंसिटी ऑफ द स्टील और आयरन यूज तो रेस ऑफ आयरन लॉस टू कॉपर लॉस कॉपर लॉस इन पर मीटर क्यूब इज इक्वल टू रो डेल्टा स्क्वायर एंड टेकिंग रजिस्ट्रिटी ऑफ अवर टू पॉइंट वन इन टू एन पावर माइनस एट ओम मीटर सेवेंटी फाइव डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड डेंसिटी एज एट पॉइंट नाइन टू एन पावर थ्री के जी पर मीटर क्यूब कॉपर लॉस पर के जी एट सेवेंटी फाइव डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड दैट इज स्पेसिफिक कॉपर लॉस विल बी पी सी इक्वल टू टू पॉइंट वन इन टू एन पावर माइनस थ्री डिवाइड बाई एट पॉइंट नाइन टू एन पावर थ्री इन टू सिगमा स्क्वायर दैट इज टू पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स इन टू टेन पावर माइनस ट्वेल्व वाट पर के जी फिर द सिगमा इज द करंट डेंसिटी इन एम पी पर मीटर क्यूब इन एडिशन टू अबाउ लॉस वी मस्ट टेक इन टू कंसर्ड इन द स्टेट रोड लॉस विच मे बी अराउंड फाइव टू ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द को लॉस डिपेंडिंग अपन द ऑपरेशन एंड टाइप ऑफ द ऑपरेशन ऑफ द ट्रांसफॉर्मर सो नाउ रेस ऑफ आयरन लॉस टू कॉपर लॉस तो टोटल आयरन लॉस पर के जी दैट इज स्पेसिफिक लॉस पी आई कैन बी फाउंड फ्रॉम द लॉस कर टोटल आयरन लॉस इज डब्ल्यू आई दैट इज योर पी आई इन टू एल आई एंड रेस ऑफ आयरन लॉस टू कॉपर लॉस पी आई अपॉन पी सी विल बी पी आई इन टू जी आई डिवाइड बाई पी सी इन टू जी सी तो वैन द डेंसिटी ऑफ द आयरन एंड कॉपर आर फिक्स एंड द लॉस पर के जी ऑफ आयरन कॉपर कैन बी रिटली डिटर्मिन एंड द रेस ऑफ द वेट्स फॉर द गिवन रेस ऑफ लॉसेज कैन इजिली बी कैलकुलेट फ्रॉम द अब इक्वेशन सो द वट इज द इफेक्ट ऑफ द फ्रिक्वेंसी द इनपुट फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मर इज वन ऑफ द डिटर्मिन फैक्टर फॉर द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मर सो वैन द इनपुट फ्रिक्वेंसी चेंज द ट्रांसफॉर्मर आयन लॉस एंड हेंस द एफिशियंसी चेंजेज सिमिलरली द वाइंडिंग रेजिस्टेंस लीकेज रिएक्टेंस एंड द वोल्टेज आर अफेक्टेड बाई द चेंज ऑफ इनपुट फ्रिक्वेंसी so let's examine the effect of frequency variation on the core loss if the voltage remains constant we have a, uh, the voltage e equal to 4.44 bm ai into t and eddy current loss will be b equal to k v b is pm square f square t if the voltage e remains constant then the product f bm remain constant then eddy current loss will remain constant as long as e is kept constant no matter what the frequency change the stress loss is proportional to product bm एफ बी एम एक्स एंड इज गिवन बाई पी एच इक्वल टू पी एच वी बी एम एक्स इन टू एफ एंड एक्सपोनशियल एक्स कैन टेक द वैल्यू ऑफ फॉर्म वन पॉइंट सिक्स टू टू पॉइंट टू डिपेंडिंग ऑन द मैग्नेटिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ द मेटीरियल एंड इफ एक्स इज एजूम टू बी टू दैन पी एच इक्वल टू पी एच एफ बी एम इन टू बी एम तो दिस बिकम के एच इन टू के इन टू बी एम वेर ई इज द कॉन्स्टेंट एंड एफ बी एम इज द कॉन्स्टेंट इक्वल टू द के तो पी एच इक्वल टू के एच इन टू एफ बी एम इन टू बी एम तो इज बिकम के एच ए के बी एम और इक्वल टू के एच के k divided by f so it become k into k square by f and hence the stresses loss will decrease with the increase in frequency so the winding resistance increases due to skin effect when the frequency is increased and this increases then this increase in negligible when the change in frequency is very small as you can see as the frequency increases the ac resistance and dc resistance differ because the tendency of ac current to flow in the outer surface on the conductor on the AC and this increases with the so effective cross section area reduces that's why the resistance I mean increases of the a on the AC of the conductor so since since the leakage reactance x o x o equal to y l the leakage reactance changes linearly with the increase in frequency so along with the change in frequency if the flux density is also changed then the new voltage rating is possible for the new voltage rating the iron loss and no load current can be calculated so summary of the effect of variation of frequency on various parameters for loss decrease with increase in frequency with voltage maintained constant and the voltage increase with the increase in frequency and leakage reactance increase with the increase in frequency and resistance increase with the increase in frequency now coming to the voltage regulation as a performance evaluation the voltage regulation of a transformer can be described as the change in the secondary voltage as the current varies from full load to no load while keeping the primary voltage constant you can just see the equivalent circuit that we are applying primary voltage vi and of course we have a primary resistance primary required current then shunt branch then ideal transformer in between with the ep and es and we have a primary current ip and second current is and then we have a resistance rs and x and real leakage reactance of secondary excess and followed by the load impedance across the output voltage so now this is the typically the phase because this voltage regulation depends on 
power factor. So, in case of unity power factor, you will say the voltage regulation is little positive because the if power factor unity, so we output voltage and current output current will be in phase. So, I R2 drop is in phase and current uh, reactance drop is at perpendicular. So, this your voltage at the primary side that is a voltage you can say is certainly more than the your output voltage. If you really have a lagging power factor, this factor current lags than the output voltage. So, I R2 or drop and then I X2 drop. So, this have a further requirement of higher voltage on the primary side. So, the voltage regulation is further poor or higher value. But when you have a leading power factor, you can see that the uh, you have a current leading than the output voltage and then the resistance also goes into the same direction. Resistance drop is in the same direction of current. Then you have a reactance in perpendicular to that. So, with the result you see the, the voltage required from the input is lower than the output voltage and this causes negative voltage regulation. And this is a very interesting phenomena typically on the AC supply and for the operation of the transformer. It means the voltage regulation is affected by the your power factor of the load in case of AC for this transformer. And there is a possibility that you can have a zero voltage regulation also in case of the transformer at a particular at full load for a particular power factor of the load which decided the parameter of the transformer. So, you can say simplified equivalent circuit and phasor diagram here you can see uh, we have a total reactance I mean RP and XP where primary voltage and the the affected I mean transmitted typically the effective voltage across the transformer referred to the primary. So, from this we can find out the this primary voltage required if we know the load voltage BP dash A square, we have to add the drop so IP RP cos phi, uh, where cos phi is the power factor of the load plus IP XP sin phi square and plus RP RP sin phi minus IP XP cos phi is square line. So, from the phasor diagram when angle theta between the uh, phi between the VP and VP dash is very small then for lagging loads we can say VP equal to VP dash plus IP RP cos phi plus IP XP sin phi or VP minus VP dash equal to IP RP cos phi plus IP XP sin phi. So, the voltage regulation VP minus VP dash divided by VP normalized by applied voltage that is IP RP cos phi plus IP X5 upon VP or we can represent this drop as a per unit. So, ER cos phi uh, and plus ER sin phi, EX sin phi. So, ER is typically IP RP upon VP and EX is IP XP upon VP. So, for leading loads it will be VP minus dash upon XP. So, ER cos phi minus EX sin phi and the voltage regulation of course, we say in per unit VP minus VP upon XP. So, this is a voltage regulation in per unit like this. So now, coming to the cooling of the transformer. So, we can say the losses develop in the transformer core and the winding cause heating of the transformer part and boost on the thermal gradient, the heat is transferred to the cooling medium depending upon the method of cooling and in very small transformer or peak AVA uh, rating, the cooling surface of the core and winding is sufficient to be cooled by the normal circulation of atmospheric air and after the capacity of the transformer increases the losses also increase. So, it is required to provide better cooling arrangement and various cooling methods are already been discussed earlier. So, we have a type of cooling as given in this diagram. We have a air cooling in dry, dry type of transformer with the natural cooling like air cooling and air force cooling or force cooling by air blast and oil, oil cooling. We have oil merge transformer. So, by natural cooling like oil natural cooling, oil natural cooling force and oil natural cooling water, water force and the force cooling like oil force air natural for oil force air force and oil force water force. So, this is you can say as we go probably higher rating we have a more challenge of this uh, typically of cooling. So, we go on higher rating from left to right as rating increases of the transformer. So, now coming typically temperature rise and design of the cooling system as you can see the physically the transformer and typically the kind of radiator on the transformer. So, tanks with the plane wall are used for a small rating transfer up to 20, 20, 20 30 or 50 kV rating as they have sufficient surface area to dissipate the heat. But with the increase in the rating of the transformer, the maintaining temperature rise with the safe working limit is not possible with the simple plane wall tanks like. So, as the tubes and radiator are used and the tank walls, tubes and radiator dissipate heat by radiation and convection and the modes of heat transfer from various regions of transformer are given in the table here. So, type of heat transfer from various regions of the transformer. So, from the region of core and winding, it goes to region outer surface and yoke by the conduction method 
an outer surface yoke to oil it goes to biconvection and from oil uh, tank to or cooler valves it goes to uh, convection and tank or cooler valves then cooling medium air or water it goes by convection and radiation. So, we have a cooling by conduction, convection and radiation. So, you typically finding out the temperature rise in the plain wall tank, the temperature rise should not exceed 55 degree Celsius for natural cooling, 60 degree Celsius for forced air cooling and 65 degree Celsius for water cooling and 45 degree for oil cooling. The cooling system dissipates 6 part per by approximately 6 part by radiation and 6.5 watt by convection per meter square of the tank surface per degree Celsius and generally for heat dissipation the bottom surface is not considered. Similarly, the top surface has fitting, bushing, etc. So, it is also not considered to dissipate the heat. So, so if the cooling surface of transformer tank neglecting top and bottom surface is taken as a ST meter square then 12.5 ST watts per meter square per degree will be dissipated uh, for medium rating transformer. And for the plain wall tank, the temperature rise will be theta equal to total loss in watts divided by 12.5 into ST surface area, all the four sides. So, as the capacity of the transform increases, the losses and temperature rise also increases. In order to keep the temperature rise within the limits, air may have to be blown or the transform as we discussed in the table. And this is not advisable as the atmospheric air containing moisture, oil particle, etc., may affect the insulation. So, to, to overcome the problem of atmospheric hazards, the transformer is placed in a steel tank filled with the oil and the oil conducts the heat from the core and coil to the wall tank as you can see in the, this animated diagram how the heat flow is there. Typically from your winding and core to the oil and from oil to the radiator tube and to the surface area. Now, temperature rise in plain wall tank, so further as the capacity of the transformer increases the increased losses demand at higher dissipation area of the tank or a bigger side tank. This calls for more space, more volume of oil and increases the cost of transportation problem. And to overcome these difficulties, the dissipation dissipating area is to be increased by using auxiliary radiator tank or by using tube without increasing the size of the tank. So, so now temperature rise in tank with the tube. So, let the cooling surface of the tank be 18 meter square. So, this will dissipate 12.5. ST watt per meter square per degree Celsius and for by provision of the tube, the tube surface area of the becomes X into ST meter square. So, X times uh, this surface area. Now, convection from the tube valve will be now X ST 6.5 into 1.35 part. So, it becomes X into ST 8.8 watt. So, since the factor of 1.35 is due to the 35 percent increase in this is transferred due to the convection by so, so for siphoning action of the tube. So, total dissipation will be 12.5 ST plus X ST 8.8 watt. The number of the tubes can be determined by knowing the surface area of the each tube and the diameter of the tube may normally be 5 centimeter and space 7 to 7.5 centimeter 10 to 2 center apart. So, now typically uh, dissipating surface area now of the tank is ST and dissipating surface area of the tube X S X ST total loss dissipation surface area of tank will be 12.5 ST watt per degree Celsius and total loss dissipated in surface area of area of and cooling will be 12.5 plus 8.8 X into ST watt per degree Celsius and total dissipation by tube due to convection will be 1.35 into 6.5 X into ST that is 8.8 X ST watt per degree Celsius. So, total surface area of walls of the tank and tube will be ST plus X ST that is a 1 plus X into ST. So, now the total dissipation, loss dissipation will be total loss dissipation by the surface area of the tank and cooling tube and total surface area of walls of the tank and tube. So, total loss dissipation will be 12.5 plus 8.8 X into ST divided by 1 plus X into ST. So, temperature rise of the tube will be theta equal to total loss in watts divided by specific heat dissipation to surface area. So, it will come Pi plus Pc divided by 12.5 plus 8.8 X into ST. So, from the, this equation, the area of the tube can be find out theta equal to Pi plus Pc divided by 12.5 plus 8.8 X into ST or equal to 12.5 ST plus 8.8 ST X equal to Pi plus theta Pc divided by theta or 8.88 X ST into X Pi upon P theta Pc upon theta equal to minus 12.5 ST and 
total area of the tube will be x into ht equal to 1 upon 8.8 in bracket pi plus pc upon theta minus 12.5 into ht. So, for the length of the tube lt and diameter of tube at dt and radius of the tube rt, so area of the tube is pi d lt. So, total number of tube will be nt equal to total area of the tube divided by area of area of it one tube. So, that is 1 upon 8.88 pi dt into lt in bracket pi plus pc upon theta minus 12.5 into ht. Now, coming to the clearances, the dimensions of the tanks depends on the type of type and capacity of the transformer, voltage rating and electrical clearance to be provided between the transformer and the tank and clearance to accommodate the connection or and taps, the clearance for base and oil above the transformer etc. So, clearance between the different parts depends on the rating of the transformer. So, let the D is the distance between the adjustant lip and D is the external diameter of the outer winding. So, now for this clearances, CW is the width by clearance between the outer winding and the tank wall and CL is the length of the wide clearance between the tank wall and the outer winding and CH is the height wide clearance between the tank wall and the outer winding. So, various clearance values for the typical transformer of rating of 1000 to 500 1000 kVA and 11 to 33 voltage rating. The value is CW is normally 40 to 80 millimeter and CL equal to 50 to 125 millimeter and CH is normally 400 to 600 millimeter. So, now as you can see in the diagram also how the dimensions are really given here. So, height wise clearances include the clearance of 50 to 60 millimeter at the base clearance of 150 to 250 millimeter above the oil and the space of about 200 to 250 for the leads like and the design of procedure for design of the cooling system is given here as a flow chart in the figure and this involves the calculation of number of cooling tube required and suitably arrange them around the tank. So, the procedure start here with the start of all the typically the data of the transformer design data and the specification then we calculate the tube, calculate the surface area, when the losses, find out x for increased wasting area then go to the determine the area of the tube, determine the total spacing area, then determine the number of tubes and determine spacing, the number of row and columns and print and then stop. So, now coming to the as a case design case history of the transformer, so three phase, two limb, four type of transformer with BS 171 rating of 400 kV, 6.6 .6 by 0 0.41 to 4.5 kilovolt in two plus one by two steps star delta star oil emerging natural cool overall limb diameter is d equal to 0.21 meter with the limb center is d equal to 0.34 meter the yoke area is the same as the of a limb so with the peak density pm equal to 1.45 tesla the volt per turn is 8.7 it equal to 8.7 volt and per turn and the current density j 3.3 ampere per minute as current window space factor is taken kw equal to 0.29 so, now coming to main diamonds and AI equal to ET upon 4, 4 BM into F, putting the value it comes 0 0.027 meter square. Therefore, the frame size have to be step coordinate area that is AI equal to 0 0.027 meter square. Now, the for the calculation of main diamonds, the primary voltage V1 equal to 6.6 .6 kilo volt and secondary voltage is your 450 by root 3 to 60 volt and number of phase are uh, number of turns per phase are n1 equal to 60 by 8.7 30 and n2 equal to 30 into 6600 into by 260 so that is 760 so n1 is increased to 76 to total number of turns 836 for the lower limit of secondary voltage so rated primary current per phase is i1 equal to 400 divided by 6.6 into 3 that is a 20 ampere and the required window area is calculated using the equation q equal to 3.33 f delta ai bm a w k w 10 power minus 3. So, from this equation comes a w equal to 0 0.071 meter square and depth of the window is l equal to a w upon d minus d capital D minus small d that is a 0.55 meter and the main dimensions are calculated and are taken equal to small d equal to 210 millimeter capital D equal to 340, milli, 340 millimeter and l for 550 millimeter and w equal to 2, 2 capital D plus 0.5 d that is 870 meter and h is your 930 millimeter. Now, coming to the magnetic circuit calculation, so material is a cold road oriented steel and the yoke area is the same as the limb area. So, total core area, core volume is 0 0.093 meter square and its mass is 700 kg. 
So here is the characteristic at 50 years of the transformers material with the elimination of 0.35 for cold load and hot load. So from here we can find out the specific loss from the figure uh, is 1.5 watt per kg. So that the total call loss with a uh, building factor of 1.3 taken PI equal to 7 into 1.5 into 1.3. So it becomes 1.37 kilowatt and now for the calculation of MF for, for no load current from this again from the material property as a BS curve as shown here for cold road guarantee and hot road guarantee is still. So we take a cold road guarantee is still which can withstand for higher flux density. So the form of the curve shown in figure the total MF of the limb is small ATC into 3 LC or 3 ATC into HW that becomes 3 into 0.55 into 150 total MF of POPJ ATI into 2 LY to ATYW that is a 2 into 0.87 into 150 so total of 510 80 raised to 5600 to allow for the greater reluctance of the joint. So, magnetizing current per primary per phase is IM equal to 600 by 3 into root 2 into 760 and the current density here considered J2 equal to 2.85 ampere per meter square. So, a little lower than the mean to improve the inner cooling. The secondary primary current is I2 equal to 133.26 and it is a 512 and the required conductor area is now A2 equal to I2 upon this delta that comes around 180 millimeter square. So, taking an available when winding depth of 465 millimeter, spacing is required to accommodate 30 plus 1 ton, giving a 15 millimeter depth per ton of the main hilex winding. Now, coming to low voltage winding design, the conductor must be subdivided to reduce eddy currents. A suitable conductor comprises four parallel, each of 13.5 millimeter into 3.5 millimeter with a corner rounded, each strip bound being wound with the 0.25 millimeter paper tap and the whole conductor assembly taps over the point with 0.5 millimeter paper and wound on a synthetic resin bounded paper uh, tube inside the diameter of 215 millimeter and thickness of 2.5 millimeter and winding is 254 millimeter in overall diameter. Now the mean turn has a diameter of 237 millimeter and a length of 0.575 meter. So, phase resistance at 70 degree 5, 75 degrees Celsius the R2 equal to uh, rho 0.21 into the number of turns 30 into 70.75 divided by 180. So, it comes 0.0026 uh, ohm and the copper loss is now I square R. So, it becomes 512 square into this resistance. So, it comes 0.69 kilowatt per phase. So, now coming to high voltage winding the conductor section a1 equal to I1 J1 that is 25 3.1 that is 6.45 millimeter square it's suitable for the circular section of the diameter of 2.85 millimeter insulated by paper wrap to 3.15 millimeter diameter. So, HV winding is sectionalized into 9 coils of 72 tons, 2 end coils of 55 tons with a reinforced insulation and a center of 76 tons coil tab at each end and at 3 intermediate point and the 2 Environmental support rings to form the out, outmost turn at each end. The total area is 9 into 72 plus 2 into 55 plus 76 plus 2. So it becomes A36 turn. So now the normal coils are arranged with the 9 conductor axially and 8 radially. So axial length of each cross section is 31.5 millimeter, including tapping. And the coils are spaced 6 millimeter apart from the press board U pieces and the support ring are each 12 millimeter thick. The total depth of the high voltage winding is 480 millimeter, have, leaving a 35 millimeter at each end for insulation and bracing. And the outside diameter of low voltage winding is 254 millimeter. So now, with the oil duct of 12 millimeter, wide to facilitate the cooling of the low voltage winding, and the inner diameter of SRB cil cylinder carrying the high voltage winding is the 278 millimeter. So high voltage winding is fitted over a 5 millimeter axial spacer bars of press board and its diameters being 294 inner and 348 meter outer and 320 millimeters mean the resistance of high voltage winding at 75 degrees Celsius per phase of 760 tons of mean turn length with of 1 meter is R1 equal to putting a value of, I mean in rho L1 typically this so it comes 2.48 ohm the copper loss is your I square R so it comes 0 0.99 kilowatt per phase. So, the core loss is now PI equal to 1.37 and the iron loss is your PC 3 into 0.69 into 0.99. So, it becomes 5.04 kilowatt. So, total full load loss is 6.41 kilowatt and say 6.5 kilowatt. 
applying the 10 millimeter between the adjacent and high voltage winding and the adequate clearances for four connection and typing. And the transformer can be accommodated in tank 1.15 meter and 0.55 meter in, in plane. So, core height is 0 0.9 meter, allowing the 50 millimeter for the base and to 50 millimeter for oil above, and the oil depth is 1.2 meter, and the, with the further 250 millimeter for connections to the tank top, the total tank wall height is 1.45 meter. Now, for the cooling, the surface area of the tank walls is 5 meter square, making it necessary for fit cooling tubes, an area of 80 tubes with the 50 millimeter diameter and the mean length of 1.5 0.5 give the total tube surface area 113.5 meter square. The ratio x is 3.6 and the specific law is p equal to that 9.83 watt per meter square and the tank temperature is it now putting the value in the formula is come 30 degree Celsius. So now the per unit resistance is calculated comes out to RPU equal to 0 0.0126 per unit. Attempts to calculate the per unit leakage reactions are at f equal to 50, f equal to n2 i2, so it comes 50. 15,360 ampere and EP is 8.7 volt, LMT is 0.5 in bracket 0.75 plus 1, that is 0.88 meter, and LC equal to 4.7, A equal to 0 0.020 meter, B1 0 0.026 meter, B2 equal to 0 0.019 meter, it give per unit reactance equal to 0 0.046 meter per unit, and the total leakage impedance is 0 0.0485 per unit. Now, coming to objective question, oil used in the Cooling transformers should have low viscosity and power transformers use the high leakage reactants. Transformer core is limited to decrease eddy current losses in transformer with increase in supply frequency RN losses decreases. The typical value of no load current expresses percent of load current is out of 3 percent. The usual flux in transformer links both LV and HP turns. The leakage reactance of transformer depends on configuration of winding, number of turns, as we can see. And if thickness of lamination T, then the eddy current loss are proportional to P square. And if the 200 by 400 transformer has a second dividing the 0.5, total reactance refer to 0 0.125 ohm by this formula. And if the design of the transformer, the usual value of the ratio of height to width, it used normally 3. And uh, while designing the transformer, the piece window height is adopted, may result to reduce leakage reactance. Now, coming to numerical problems. So, coming to first numerical, calculate the leakage reactance of 50 hertz transformer with the following data. Number of primary and second turns 530. Mean turn length of the primary second is 1.25 meter and 1.05 meter. Thickness of each winding 0.025 meter. And width of the duct 0.015 meter and height of the each winding 0.61 meter. We know the leakage reactance of the primary winding with this formula. Xt equal to pi f pi 0 to p square LMT upon LC in bracket A plus PS BP by 3. And we have all the dimensions here. So, putting all this LMT comes 1.25 plus 1.05 by 2, so 1.15, and putting the value in XP it comes to 6.1 ohm. Now, coming to second numerical problem, a 600 kVA 600 600 by 400 volt 50 or 3 phase core type of transfer has the following data width of the HP LV and HP winding 3 centimeter and width of the duct between low voltage and high voltage 2 centimeter, height of a low voltage and high voltage winding 40 centimeter, length of mid turn 1.5 meter, length number of turns in high voltage winding 220, estimate the leakage reactance of transfer equal to high voltage winding. So, all the dimensions are given here and from the formula of x equal to pi f0 phi mu 0 tp square LMT upon LC in bracket AP plus BS BP by 3 for the value it comes x equal to 0.866. Coming to numerical problem 3, calculate the percentage regulation full load, point eight lagging power factor for 500 kV with the 6000 upon 400 volt delta star, 3 phase 50 years code type of transform having a cylindrical coil of equal length with the following data, height of the coil 48 centimeter, thickness of the LV in 2.53 centimeter and 1.65 centimeter, insulation between LV, low voltage and high voltage coil 1.4 centimeter, mean diameter of coil 28 centimeter, volt per turn 8 volt and full load of loss. 3.8 kilowatt. So, number of primary turns T1 equal to this typically your primary voltage V upon your ET that is 750 and primary current IP equal to KV into n power 3 into 3 V1. So, it comes 27.7 ampere and the RP comes copper loss by 3 to IP square. So, it comes RP equal to 165 ohm and re reactance of primary FP into 2 pi F mu 0 TP square T LMT upon 
calcium bracket A plus B S B P upon by 3. So, putting the value of all the dimensions, so X becomes 11.35 ohm voltage regulation IP RP equals 5 plus X P I P sin 5 divided by V T, putting the value it comes 3.75 percent. So, now numerical problem 4, find the no load current of 400 volt, 50 hertz single phase volt type function with the following data, length of the mean flux path is 200 centimeter, gross core section 100 centimeter square, joint have a 0.1 millimeter equivalent to air gap, maximum flux density 0.7 tesla, safe core loss 5.5 watt per kg at 50 degree and 0.7 tesla and ampere returns 2.2 per centigrade per centimeter, staking factor 0.9 and density of steel is 7.5 times power 3 kg per meter square. So, the total MF is 80 0 equal to 80 i into L i into 80 by L i plus M for joint. So, putting the value it comes like 80 0 comes 496 and the net iron cross cellular gross iron area plus the stacking factor. So, it comes down to 19 to 10 power minus 4 meter square and the EMF per phase EPS 4.44 F I M I into T P H keeping first. So, we get the terms 286 and magnetizing current now I M equal to 80 0 under root 2 T P it comes 1.226 ampere. Total weight of the core equal to volume and to density of the steel or net cross section area internal length into density of steel putting the value it comes 135 kg and total power loss is specific loss into weight per core. So, specific loss is 0.5 watt per kg into 135 it comes 67.5 watt and core loss current is your IC equal to this core loss divided by your voltage. So, that comes 0 0.168 watt and no load current is I0 on root time IM square IC square and value it comes 1.237 ampere. Coming to numerical problem 5 find the no load current of 200 by 100 volt. 1 kVA 50 hertz single phase transformer with the following data gross cross section area of the core 27 centimeter square effective magnetic core length 0.5 meter width of the core 7.5 kg maximum flux density 1.5 1 tesla magnetizing current MF is 200 ampere ton per meter is specific core loss 2 watt per kg all with this all the data we know the MF per phase 4.44 FTA BMT AI PH so putting the value we get the here the terms uh, per phase comes 337 and considering a stacking factor i equal to 0.9 so we know the magnetizing current 80 0 under root 2 tp magnetizing current 80 0 under root 2 p just putting the value it comes 0 0.0209 and core loss component core loss by v1 so it comes loss per kg into weight of the core v1 so it's a 2 putting the value 2 into 7.5 divided by 200 it comes 0 0.075 and no load current is I0 under root IM square IC square. So, it comes like I0 equal to 0 0.22186 ampere. Now, coming to numerical problem 9, the design of cooling system for 3 phase delta star code called oil emerge transformer operating 200 kVA, 6000 by 400 volt, 50 hertz allowable temperature rise for the tank wall is 550 degrees Celsius, dimension of tank 1.5 area of 125 centimeter high, 100 centimeter length and 50 centimeter width allowing losses is 5 kilowatt. So, what will the temperature rise without cooling arrangement? All the data of temperature rating is, transform rating is Q is given 200 kVA of 3 phase, voltage rating of 6600 by 400 volt, allow temperature 50 degrees Celsius, allow losses 5 kilowatt, tank size is 1.25 into 1 into 0.5 meter. So, we know losses equal to 12.5, dissipated to be 12.5 ST into theta plus 8.78 in 18 into theta. So, we can find out the dissipating surface here and neglecting top and bottom. Here ST equal to 2 ST multiply del T plus WT putting the value from 3.75 meter square and from this we can find out the typically from formula 80, 80 comes 6.05 meter square. So, let the diameter of tube 5 centimeter and the average height of the tube is 105 centimeter. So, dissipating area of the each tube is 80 equal to 5 DL. So, that becomes 0.1649 meter square after putting the value. The number of the tube now 6.05 divided by 0.1647 that 36 tube. So, if the tubes are placed 7 centimeter apart from the center to center that the number of the tube on 100 centimeter side and 50 centimeter side are 12 in and 6 as shown in the figure below. So, total tubes is 2 into 12 plus 2 into 6 36. So, specific is based on in case of plane wall the 12.5 watt per meter square per degree Celsius. So, temperature is I come 5000 divided by 12.5 into 75, it comes 1065.66 Celsius. 
where the temperature is within 50 degree additional surface provided of the 36 to, to dissipate heat. So now coming to numerical problem 7, a 3 phase 100 MB, a 3.33 by 6.6 KB 50 year transformer has the following value of initial design, length of the transformer is 160 centimeter, height of the transformer 250 degree Celsius centimeter, width of is 78.5 centimeter, use length of 50 centimeter, uh, 11.5 centimeter and 11 centimeter. And respective on height, width, and length of the in the tank. Total iron loss is 25 kilowatt and the coal loss is 100 kilowatt. Calculate the temperature rise of the temp transformer without cooling tube and calculate the number of tubes to limit the temperature to 50 degrees Celsius. Also, comment on the choice of cooling system and whether the cooling tubes are advisable in a practical use. Now, given a transformer rating of 500 kVA, 3 phase voltage rating 6.6 .6 and divided by 440 volt. Tank size 1 into 0.96 into 0.4 meter, the length of 15 to 14 into 13 centimeter, diameter of cooling to 50 millimeter, and allowable temperature is 35 degrees Celsius. Total size transformer including clearance wall size LT, ST, LT into double, and putting the value it comes 150, 110 into 60 centimeter. Total dissipating surface area, putting at the avoiding the neglecting top and bottom, so it comes 2 in bracket LT, ST into LT plus. ST into WT, it comes 5.1 meter square and total loss is 12.5 into ST in theta plus 8.8 theta. So, that is keeping a value of 7000 crore loss, losses here. So, area of the tube from 80 15.6 meter square and the average height of the tube is 0.9 ST. So, it comes like 135 centimeter receiving surface size tube is 80 pi DL. Putting value it comes 0 0.212 meter square and number of tube required 80 upon delta is comes like 74 tube. So, if tubes are placed 7.5 centimeter, 7 centimeter apart, then the number of tubes that can be placed along 110 centimeter and 60 centimeter side are 110 by 7.5 and 60 by 7.5 respectively. So, there are 15 and 8 respectively. So, if 15 and 8 tubes are provided, then the total number of tubes is 2 into 15 plus 8, that is 46. Since 76 tubes to be used to dissipate the heat, an additional row of 46 tubes can be used, which increases the total number of the tubes, say 40 into 2, 92 and that is much more than 74. Hence, the, we can select the 13 tubes that can be powered 110 centimeter and 6 tube can be powered on 60. So, number tube is 2 into 13 plus 6 plus 2 into 13 plus that comes 76 tube. And instead of 74 tube, 76 can be used as shown in the figure. Now, coming to numerical problem 8, while designing the low voltage and high voltage windings of the 250 kVA, 6600 volt by 400 volt 50 or 3 page delta star core type transformer following that are have been obtained. The voltage per turn 6.5 volt, axial length of the low voltage and high voltage winding 300 millimeter or 30 centimeter, area of the low voltage conductor 150 centim 157 millimeter square, area high voltage conductor 4.9 millimeter square, inside diameter of the LB winding 222 centimeter, outside diameter of LB winding 26 centimeter, inside diameter of H winding 29 centimeter outside of it of H winding 34 centimeter. Calculate the reactance of the transform referred to high voltage winding per unit regulation of full load and 0.89 perfect 8 pi per factor lagging. Assume the suitable value of missing data. So, reactance of the transform, total reactance of the transformer referred to H winding. X1 calculate X1 equal to pi F mu 0 L M T T1 square upon LT in bracket A plus B1 B2 plus Y3. So, putting the value mean turn length of the LMT. Uh, putting the value 75.5 centimeter and LMT1 is the putting value is 99 centimeter. So, mean turn length of LV and winding LMT comes average of T2 is T7.25 and axial length of LVH winding LC equal to 30 centimeter and mean turn volt per turn is 6.5. So, turns per in LT winding is 400 by root 3 divided by 6.5. So, T2 comes uh, T1 T2 comes typically out of uh, or 1028 and duct between LV and winding that is 1.5 centimeter radial of width of H winding is B1 2.5 and radial of L winding B2 equal to 2 centimeter and putting value of in X1 relation so it comes here 30.6 36.8 ohm and regulation comes here eta equal to I1 I1 cos phi plus I1 X1 sin phi by B1 so where I1 we calculate from KVA divided by voltage 12.6 ampere and resistance of per phase LV winding R2 that comes 0 
C3 is ohm and R, R1 comes putting value 4.1 ohm. So, R1 equivalent comes R1 plus R2 into T1 upon T2 square becomes 6.95 ohm and substituting the value in this so eta comes uh, 0 0.081 per unit or 8.1 percent like. Now, coming to numerical problem 9, uh, during the design of 300 kV, 11,000 kV above and 440 volt, 50 S3 phase delta star 4 type transformer with the following information. Height of the window 44 centimeter, overall length of the yoke 92 centimeter, net iron area of the core 290 centimeter square, net iron of the yoke with 330 centimeter square, maximum flat density in yoke 1.17 Tesla, cross section of LV conductor 1 centimeter square, limit and length of the LV winding 83 centimeter, cross section of LV 0.121 millimeter square. Meter length of the LV winding 103 centimeter, specific iron loss on at 1.17 Tesla 1.9 watt per kg and specific loss at 1.35 Tesla 2.8 watt per kg. So based on the design data, calculate the iron loss. The iron loss comes uh, to we have to find out volume of the core V is equal to 3 into H in 12. So it comes 38 to 80 centimeter square. The weight of the core comes W so into this weight into density, it comes 289 kg. And maximum flux density in the core is B C equal to B by into H. So it comes iron loss in the core 2.8 into 2.89. That's 809 watt. Now coming to for the yoke, the volume of the yoke is 2 into A Y into W Y. So it comes 6 1 putting value, 6 1 61,456 centimeter square. And the weight of the yoke comes this volume multiplied the density. So it comes 464 kg. And iron loss in the yoke comes from specific watt 1.9 into 464. That comes at 80 to what and, and total iron loss comes this loss of the yoke and plus core that comes 16 1691 watt so full load copper loss resistance of alloy winding is r2 rolled lmt t2 by a2 where the it i mean from et 4.44 fpm ai so we get 8.7 volt and volt for alloy winding comes 415 by root no, 254 for lb turns come typically around the what is winding from 254 by 87, they 30, and the number of HV winding turns comes typically 1300. And full load current in LV winding I2 that KV rating 390, 393 ampere, and the full load ampere in HV winding is comes here 9.1. And assuming the resistivity of rho 0.2 ohms per meter millimeter square, the resistance of LV winding comes, bring the value it comes 0.03 ohm. And copper loss comes 3 I2 square R2 that comes to 3090 watt. And resistance of primary LV winding comes H winding comes R1 that is 8 minus 1 ohm. And the loss, copper loss comes 3 into I1 square R1 2062 watt. So, hence total copper loss comes at full load sum of these two 3452 watt. Now, there are these are the three unsolved problems which you can solve and answer it given. And this material prepared with the uh, following references or books, you can just refer it for additional length. Thank you very much.